One of Hubble's most iconic images of all time are the pillars of creation. Tonight, it is our turn to capture them. Our current record for the longest time spent on one image is Barnard's Loop from episode 8, with a total of 7.2 hours exposure time. We are determined to get APOD this year, and have decided to beat our exposure time record on tonight's target. Would it truly be worth it? Let's pack up our gear and head out to the desert. We finally have a backyard. Thankfully, tonight's target is a great narrowband object that could be captured from home. However, because we're looking for the least amount of noise and the best possible quality, we're gonna have to go far from this Bortle 9 zone to a Bortle 4. I need to park backwards so I can put everything in the trunk. Miss Dahlia, it's a very intricate maneuver, but hopefully we can do it. Okay, I'm gonna stop filming now. So what do we need to put in the trunk? The mount. The telescope. Our binoculars, why not? The goods. The other goods. Our battery. Comfort. Food and water. And then just in case, another battery. Oh. Coats. Don't forget coats. Before we make our stop in the desert, we're going to stop by and get some goodies at Starbucks. Hi there, can I get a venti uh, mango dragon fruit refresher with lemonade? We also stopped by a bakery to get some croissant. Oui. We drove past the Creech Air Force Base and saw something interesting. Our friend Patrick, a former Air Force jet pilot, explained that it was an MQ-9 Reaper. No one's in there. Very crazy to see it in action like that. A majority of combat missions worldwide are controlled via satellite link from this very base. We kept driving, leaving the civilized world behind, and headed out to our favorite place, the middle of nowhere. Miles and miles of empty road, a scorching heat incredible desert landscapes and no service <laughs> but this is what we love you me and nature and the millions of stars Alright, so we are here. This is our new, <laughs> our new uh, regular spot. As you can see, it's pretty empty, which is nice. Look at this background. This background is amazing. I mean, look at the spot. It's empty. It's perfect, and uh, it's our new regular spot. Alright, I'm gonna jump and try to steal. 
That was scary. Ah! Alright, stop. Stop! Ah. Did you like it? Was it fun? I'm so scared of this. Yes, time here as well and Twan's been here before and we're out in the gorgeous Nevada desert which I am a very big fan of I mean look it's at that it's beautiful it's beautiful there's so many mountains around there's nothing behind us it's Nature, just empty uh, there's, plants growing yeah it's, it's amazing so there is one road here the highway uh, that goes to and from Vegas I don't think the cars are going to bother us so hopefully we'll we'll be fine Yes, not really. Quarantine restrictions have been lifted and are going to continue, so people are just finding themselves on the road. And we have plenty of time here, so we're going to just chill a bit and then... Um... And then we're going to show you guys, we're going to set up our equipment and then show you guys what equipment we'll be using tonight. Yep. This is going to be the area where we want to set up. This on the tripod means, well, usually, this is where the mount will uh, lock into place and it's going to point north. So make sure it's pre-sunk into the ground so it doesn't sink later. You want to make sure you're very careful with the mount. So we have the mount in this luggage here. There you go, like that. Now before you put the telescope on the mount, we have to make sure we put the counterweights first. And we're going to make sure we put this back on right away. Like that, and now it's safe. Super light, that's awesome. And then you can put the telescope here. I'm actually going to put it this way because I don't want the focus to touch this. All right, so tonight we're going to image M16, the Eagle Nebula. We already have this shot with our DSLR camera from like four years ago, uh, but we've been waiting, waiting and waiting until we can capture it with our uh, a cool camera. So it's going to be very awesome in our band as well. So hopefully it's going to be nice. And today we're going to be using this Mead 70mm Apo instead of our regular Newtonian, which is going to be very cool. So as I was saying, we're going to be using a cool camera. We're going to be um, attaching this ASI 1600 to the telescope later and image in narrowband, so HA03 and S2. And hopefully it's going to look nice. We're probably going to aim for five hours, I think. Hopefully. We waited for the clouds to go away. Every weather channel we checked said it would be 100% clear, but each forecast was wrong. Ah! We arrived early, so we decided to explore the area together. The desert may look empty, but there are so many little things to see if you just walk around. We strayed far from our setup, but we felt like we were the only people on Earth at the time. We made our way back to the car before the sun got too low and hung out in the car for a bit. Mm. But out, get out. What are you this doing? This is your only chance to survive. What are you doing, man? <gasps> what are you doing? I'm trying to get the gnats out of the car, but they're dumb. Idiot. I'm going to trap you. Die. So a huge bug just went into the car, a flying bug. We have no idea what it is, but it's kind of scary. I know it's here somewhere. I'm guessing it wants to drink. I bet you I got a Starbucks. Where is it? I'm so afraid. Is it a food bag? That would be suicide. Maybe it's in the... Ah! That's huge! What is this? I 
What is that? Ah! Ah! <laughs> I'm so scared. What? What? Is it a beetle? I don't know what it is. Ah! He's coming up to me. Oh, he's huge. You do it. I can, I'm scared. I'm scared. That's huge. Nope. Ugh. We don't even know what that is. If you do, let us know. What is that? Some desert weird alien monster creature, I don't know. If you're like us, we always get kind of stressed and anxious right before the stars come out. Will our equipment work? Will there be unexpected clouds or wind? Will it be a successful night? Or will we go home empty-handed and disappointed? R.I.P. in peace. Well, the sun went down and we could sense an immediate change in temperature. It is a lot colder than it was before. So we're gonna wait a little bit until M16 is high enough, around 25 degrees uh, high, and then we're going to launch the pictures with uh, the ASI Air on the iPad. So it's gonna be fun and uh, we'll see how it goes. Tonight we're going to be using the Mead Apo uh, 70 millimeter refractor telescope so we can have a nice you know wide view of the entire Eagle Nebula and hopefully some nice faint clouds all around it and then as a, the camera we're going to be using as I was telling you earlier uh, the ASI 1600 with a filter wheel so we're going to be shooting in narrowband and then this is connected to the ASI Air right here so we can use our iPad which is connected to the Pegasus Astro Pocket Power Box which divides power to uh, you know from the battery to the SI air to the mount and to the camera then we have the guider here um, which is connected to the camera so everything is all connected together and uh, it all goes to the SI air and then uh, from there it all goes to the iPad and as for the power everything goes to the Pegasus box here so it's gonna be nice exciting Let's start now. The Eagle Nebula is not located in the Eagle constellation Aquila. It is actually located in the constellation of the snake, Serpens. It is within the bright Milky Way band close to other popular deep sky objects, such as M17, the Omega Nebula, which can be seen in the same field of view as M16 if using a pair of binoculars. The Eagle Nebula contains a bright cluster of stars in its center, and most importantly, the Pillars of Creation, made famous by the Hubble Space Telescope in 1995. Even if you've never had an interest in astronomy, it is very likely that you've seen this image before. The tallest pillar has a height of four light years. NASA also released an infrared version of the image showing more stars and sharper details. There are many small shapes of gas within the Eagle Nebula. Tonight, our main goal will be to get a nice overall image that is much better than our first attempt with our DSLR camera. And here is our first test shot of 5 minutes in HA. Fantastic! The framing looks nice, the focus is perfect, and well, all we have to do is activate the guiding and shoot away. It's looking really nice so far. That's 5 minutes in HA. Daya is sleeping now in the car, so 
I'm by myself, super cold here. And just when everything was going perfect, this happened. So apparently there's some guys there with a big truck and they're unloading some uh, off-road vehicles. I'm really hoping they won't come uh, to us because Dahlia is going to get really scared. I'm just like, going to do some off-road like right here. Uh, it's going to be kind of annoying. We've had our share of encounters with shady or drunk people in the past, but I woke up really scared. These guys seem to be just a group of friends trying to have fun. Instead of being angered by the lights and all that smoke, I decided to have some fun and grab the drone instead. And just when we thought there were only a couple of them, there were more. They returned a couple of hours later, but for now, my strong, resilient husband managed to chase them away. Right, uh, yep, I did. Needless to say, we're glad our telescope had a dew shield to protect against all that dust. But our chair and luggage outside on the ground were totally covered. Okay, so our equipment is busy imaging now, so we're going to answer some questions from Instagram that we asked you guys earlier, so we have a few here. Question from Jackie Gotcher. Do you have an astrophotography bucket list? Um, yes, the bucket list is to get all the messy objects, pretty much, um, all of them. So that's the main bucket list we have. Right, and I think lately we've been able to add a couple more to the Messier list, uh, which is pretty awesome. So, you know, we're getting there. This show is going well so far. This show, we've, we've had a few, yeah. Would you buy the SBMIT if you could again, or go for a different mount and if so, what mount? Um, you're gonna have to wait until the review for that because the mighty mount so far uh, we've we've had ups and downs with it. So we're gonna wait until the, the full review video. Um, to really unleash our opinion about it. Yeah, it, it, it all depends on how those few weeks are gonna um, go by. Yes. But um, as for other mounts, I think the, the best one that people keep saying is amazing is the 10 micron mount. That's apparently a dream mount and apparently it's so easy to use and it's just so straightforward. So I guess I would just pick the 10 micron mount just I guess from what I've heard. Money is no, uh, like, yeah, money's no issue. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. So that, that's an expensive one. But, um, Next, what do we have? Will you picture the North American Nebula? Um, the North American Nebula, we already have a picture of it which is right here. The North American Nebula we used are the same equipment, the ASI 1600 and the mid 70 millimeter Apo. Yes. And we already got it. That was recent. Next. Um, have or did you ever use Photoshop for image processing? Uh, we never use Photoshop. Uh, I think the only times we use Photoshop is for star trails or for um, just really quick Milky Way stuff. But yeah. we, we never use Photoshop. We, we just it's go always like Lightroom, right? Pix Insight and Lightroom. Pix Insight. Yeah. Uh, Pix Insight is always uh, the, the, the processing software we use. <laughs> this one's. I like your, your username, your handle. Jimmy Crackcorn 90745 asks if we're planning on having kids in the future. The answer is yes. When? Who knows? We'll see about that. In the Maybe future. one day we're still. You know, trying to live our couple lives and... We need to do more travels and we need to, to be more, you know, stable in life. So right. We'll see. There's just a few more things we want to check off our list before that happens. Then Astrono Sky asks, what is your favorite space object 
For me, it's going to be Soul's Helmet. I really like the Sombrero Galaxy. I like the way that it looks. I like I like Galaxy's seen edge on. I think that they're really, really cool and interesting. And I know everyone's like, oh, what about the spiral arms? But I, I, I don't know. I like it a lot. Don't judge me. <laughs> Have you guys encountered any problems with your DSLR, like dark spots and dust stuck on the lens? Yep, we did. Uh, we have. Actually, we still have some problems. We bought a, a sensor cleaning kit, but sadly, right. on Amazon it says full frame cleaning kit or full frame sensor cleaning kit and i thought it was full like you know a complete kit but it's actually full frame sensor cleaning kit and i was like yeah, oh no it's like oh okay well you advertise this terribly yeah because our, our thing is is a crop sensor so it won't fit so we bought it for nothing yeah so you might have to find a crop sensor cleaning kit somehow but uh, annoying big bummer what was the first deep sky object that you captured with your first equipment greeting some chile the very first one was the yeah. Pleiades, the Pleiades, yeah. There was a ran 8-inch astrograph was the Pleiades. The Pleiades. And that night we forgot to take off the cap from the guiding camera. So fun. So pretty much um, the whole night was guided on on a hot pixel. Great. Let's see. There are a few left. Um, How did you get into astrophotography? So it's going to be a long answer, but go to the uh, video that says Astronomy as a Couple. And we explain everything in there. So in this video, we explain the whole the, the in whole thing detail. since like day one. So we, you can see everything in there. APS-C versus full frame for astrophotography. Uh, we recently got a full frame camera for the first time, and we yep. love it so far. Uh, full frame is great, I think, and um, I would say full. F uh, it's it's a hard choice because full frame depends also on the telescope that you have. So. Sometimes a telescope might not, um, you know, um, illuminate the whole sensor. So I mean, if it's a question about what we prefer, we are used to a uh, crop sensor, so yes. APS-C. But um, however, we are we are now starting to to dig into the full frame world, and it's so far we love it. Is the astronomic CLS filter good for everything? Also, love you guys. Oh my god, thank you. Uh, the Astronomic CLS filter is extremely popular and I believe it's one of the best ones uh, for the price. Uh, we, we don't have it. Um, well, good for everything. I would say it's good for broadband, I think. This one's for broadband. For narrowband, if you want something amazing, just go for the Trial Ultra. That's, that's the best filter ever for narrowband. Um, oh, and we also have a video about it um, from the backyard on a full moon night and it was it's fantastic. Amazing, amazing results. Uh, Is your wife Iranian? She looks very Persh Persian. She looks Persian. Um, I am not Persian or Iranian. I get a lot of like, I I get that comment a lot. I think it might be because I, I think it's like. Wise. I think I like. I love a heavy bro. No, I love a strong bro and heavy eyeliner. And I think a lot of women. Um. I think in the Middle East, sorry if I'm wrong, like use eyeliner similar to the way that I do it or I do it similar to theirs. But yeah, I've gotten that comment before. I am Mexican. My family's all from Mexico. Um, I'm Mexican-American born and raised here. But yeah, it's it's funny. I get that a lot. So very interesting question. Is it worth it to drive out to a dark sky site? Number one priority for us is the dark sky. Look at us right here. We are under a bottle three slash bottle four zone. We drove an hour to come here. Right. It, it really does matter. Like if you really want to get the best pictures possible, all the way. You, you that's the first thing that you got to think about is like getting to the darkest skies possible. Sometimes you can't escape it like us. Like we probably can only get as far within one hour to a bottle three bottle four zone. But I mean. If you if you live in a very densely populated area and you can only really get to like Bordel six, Bord five, it's better than Bordel nine. It's better than being yeah Bordel nine. So definitely, definitely. Uh, Astro Imager, no questions. Just wanted to thank you. Great job. Keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Oh my god, thank you. We really appreciate <laughs> the support. I appreciate you. Thank you. And then the last question. How do you motivate yourself when something really bad occurs when you're imaging? Which is so funny because that happens today. 
Um, today we went out and it's supposed to be zero cloud cover, zero wind. And then we come out here and what do we see? Lots of clouds, lots of wind. And uh, then our equipment started getting all staticky on us. And then people started passing by in their like dirt bikes a while ago. So there's... Two days, two days going terrible so far. We have we had so many failed nights. You have no idea. We don't tell you guys, but we had so many nights where we we drove like an hour away, went back home with nothing, like all sad and stuff, horrible. But we keep going and we get great images and then we we're happy. So yeah, it's always rewarding. Making sure like to remember why we're doing it in the first place. And yeah, again. We've said before, this sometimes like these really bad things can be a hobby killer and you're just like, why am I even doing this? Okay, I see. It's really late, so we're really tired. I'm actually I very, very tired. Those were all the ones we got um, before we left. So that was the FAQ. The night was going fantastic. At 4.20 a.m., our series of photos were almost finished. Our camera, the accessory, and the telescope all did an amazing job. We just hope the dust did not mess things up too much. Well, it is now almost 4 a.m. and we're so tired and so sleepy, so we're gonna stop imaging for the night. And um, I think we got some great data. The moon just rose as well, so it's time to go. And um, when the moon rose, there was a a lot of clouds around it so I'm really hoping there was no cloud around the nebula itself we'll see uh, when we see on the computer but yeah we're going to pack now and uh, hopefully we have enough packing is always better as a team and over the years we've learned to pack quicker each time It was time to get on the road and drive back home with all our juicy data. Alright, we're back home. It's sunrise outside, it's like 5 something am, so we're going to go to bed now. It's gonna be hard, but. At least we'll, hopefully we'll have some nice data tomorrow. The night was pretty short and Antoine hardly got any sleep because he was so excited to see the raw frames. All right, so it's the morning now. We are both very tired. Um, I'm kind of afraid to check the files because of those clouds we saw when we packed up. So hopefully it's all good, but I'm kind of scared, so. Yeah, we've, we're going to check all the files right after breakfast. I spent hours, days processing M16 until finally getting a result I was proud of. It was actually more difficult than I thought because I could never be happy with the colors. It was either too yellow or too orange or too orangey yellowy. Uh, in the end, I settled with an image that still looks impressive, where the pillars of creation are visible, the shape of the eagle, and so, so much gas all around the nebula.
The processing techniques I used are the same for all our images and can be downloaded as a PDF guide online. We'll have the link below. I also tried doing a different palette, HSO. I like it, but I prefer the Hubble palette more. We don't feel like this is good enough for a pod though. This target is imaged way too often and let's be honest, ours doesn't really have anything unique going on with it. We need to aim for something more rare. So we have two Astro friends uh, here in Vegas who also imaged M16 recently. So we had an idea of combining all our data together, which is about 20 hours in total and see what we will get. And uh, so here is Patrick's data of M16 and here is Team's M16. And when combined, this is uh, the result I got after processing it. So it looks good uh, when processed, but not as crazy as I was expecting. That's because um, we all use different cameras and different telescopes, so pretty much the image scale was kind of off for each, and um, there was pretty much no point of combining all the data together. And then I also tried one last time to process my data um, with some crazy colors, and here is the result, um, but I think I prefer the original one better. Jupiter is the fifth planet from the Sun and is one of the four gas giants in our solar system. It is twice as massive as all of the other planets combined. Will Jupiter be the first planet we image with better equipment? Will we be lucky and finally see the great red spot? Saturn is another gas giant. We made an episode about Saturn several years ago in episode 3. Today, we want to capture this planet with our current gear and actually use planetary processing techniques for the first time. How will it turn out? Guys, we hope that you really, really enjoyed this video. If you want to take a shot at, you know, processing our raw data, you can definitely find it on our website on the M16 blog post. And you can also find other, a bunch of other raw data available on our Patreon. A lot now, yes. And if you guys want a print of either M16 or something else, just email us and, uh, yeah, hang something in your home. And then last thing, if you guys didn't know, we have an app now available uh, for iPhones and iPads. And um, so we just actually entered M16 in there today. So uh, if you guys want to up download the app and uh, fill out your own catalogs, just go on the App Store and find my Astro, my Journal. Astro Journal. So we'll see you guys next time. And uh, guys. Guys.